Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with the greatest integer value function. We have, you can also call that the floor function. The greatest integer value of log x with base 2 is equal to the greatest integer value function of the log x with base 3. So we have this equation. Go ahead and give it a try first before you watch the video and then check it out. Okay, let's get started. So, obviously, the greatest integer function is defined as, let's go ahead and write the definition. If you have the, let's call that floor function. I think it's probably easier to just say floor. Okay, so floor value of y, if it's equal to k, which means that k needs to be an integer, right? So this is an integer. That means that y is going to be between k and k plus 1. Okay, so that's basically how it's defined. So now what, what we're going to do to solve this problem is we're actually going to do the same thing here. So we're going to use substitution. Let's go ahead and set these equal to k. Now what is this supposed to mean? Let's go ahead and each one write each one separately. Log x with base 2 is equal to k. Now this means that log x with base 2 is between k and k plus 1, where k is an integer, obviously. Let's not forget that. k is an integer. So from here, we can actually raise everything 2 to the power. So that's going to look like 2 to the power k is less than or equal to 2 to the power log 2x less than 2 to the power k plus 1. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, it just means that this is equal to x in the middle. So we can just take the x from there x is between 2 to the power k and 2 to the power k plus 1, where k is an integer. Okay? So that's basically part of our equation. Now, let's go ahead and do the same thing for base 3. So let's see what we get from there. So that's one of the inequalities that I'm getting from here. So equation turning into an inequality, basically. Okay, let's do the same thing with base 3. So if this is equal to k, then I can safely say that log 3x is going to be between k and k plus 1, which means 3 to the power k is less than or equal to 3 to the power log x with base 3 less than 3 to the power k plus 1. As you know, by definition, this is going to equal x. So x is going to be between 3 to the power k and 3 to the power k plus 1, where k is an integer like before. So this is my second inequality. Okay? Awesome. Now I have two inequalities and I need to solve for x. So we just use k uh, as a substitution formula. So how do we solve for x from here? Well, we have to consider several different values of k. k is an integer. So k can k be anything. So is it possible for k to be a real large or is it real small? So we're going to test some values here. So why don't we start with k equals 0, for example. What happens if k is equal to 0? So let's go ahead and check it out. If k is equal to 0, then I'm going to be getting x between 1 and 2 to the power 1, which is 2. And from here, if k is equal to 0, then I'll be getting x between, if k equals 0, then it's going to be 1 as well, right? between 1 and 3. So, what, what is that supposed to mean? Let's go ahead and write this actually in a more systematic way. So, if k is equal to 0, then x is between 1 and 2, and it's between 1 and 3. Obviously, the lower numbers are always included. Okay, when you think about this, both of them need to be satisfied. So, we're going to look at the intersection. What is that supposed to mean? It means if k is equal to 0, x needs to be between 1 and 2 because the intersection of these two inequalities is just going to give us the interval 1 and 2. Okay? We can also write this in the interval notation as using the brackets and parentheses like this. Okay? So that's going to be part of our solution. Are there other solutions we have to check? So let's go ahead and check it for k equals 1. Now, if k equals 1 and you're going to need to refer back to this, but basically it's the same inequality except the base is 2. So let's go ahead and write it down from here. If k is equal to 1, then x is going to be between 
2 to the power 1, which is 2, and 2 to the power 2, which is 4. And basically, those are consecutive powers of 2, and we just pick up where one of them left, and that's going to be between 4 and 8. Now, if you think about these two inequalities, they overlap, right? So where do they overlap? Well, actually, it, they don't, right? There's no overlap. So actually, we made a mistake here. Let's go ahead and fix that. That's not right. Okay, we have to do it for 3. So if k is equal to 1, then x is going to be between 3 to the power 1, which is 3 in this case, and the other one is going to be 9. I'm like, they don't intersect? They should. Okay. So between 2 and 4 and 3 and 9. So if you think about it, then your intersection is going to include the 3 and not the 4, right? Because 4 is not included, it's not going to be in the intersection. So you can write this as a half closed interval like this one. Okay, again, this is another piece. We're just going to continue. Is this going to continue forever? We'll find out. Okay, let's see. What happens if k is equal to 2? Then we're going to be getting x between 4 and 8 and x between 9 and 27. So we're just going to go to the cubes, right? Because we have k plus 1 here, and that's going to give us the third powers. Okay, cool. Now, think about this. And if it doesn't make sense, just draw a number line. So I have the 4, I have the 8. doesn't have to be drawn to scale. doesn't really matter. Okay, so 4 is included, 8 is not. That's an open dot closed dot and an open dot. So one of my intervals is this one and the other interval is this one. So they are not connected. They, they don't overlap. So there is no intersection. The solution here is actually empty set. So part of my solution is empty set. What happens if I union that to the other one? Nothing. Okay. It's kind of like adding zero. So far I have those two pieces. Are there other pieces? Well, you notice that as soon as the numbers start getting larger, like k equals 2, the second powers, third powers, they're more and more apart. So now at the third power, this difference is going to be bigger. So they'll never meet again. Okay, so we're done with the positives. Let's go ahead and check the negative numbers. What about the negatives? Is that going to be a similar pattern? Let's find out. If k is equal to negative 1, then I'm supposed to have 2 to the power of negative 1 here and 2 to the power zero here, right? Because we have k and k plus one, so it's going to be negative one and zero. And the same thing goes for three, and it's going to be very, very similar. Okay, what is that supposed to mean? This means that x is between one half and one, and x is between one third and one. Okay, do you think there's an intersection? Yes, because well, they're both uh, between something and one, so they're definitely going to intersect somewhere. But what is that intersection? Well, since one third is smaller than one half, their intersection is going to be between one half and one. You can also verify that by drawing a number line, putting the numbers here, one third, one half, and one. One of them is going to be this one, and the other interval is going to be this one. And their intersection is definitely going to include one half, and but not one okay so this is another interval that we can kind of piece together with the other ones again with the half closed pattern one half to one okay all right so let's check out negative two do you think there's going to be a solution let's check it out okay if k is negative two then we get two to the power negative two x and two to the power negative one and we get 3 to the power negative 2 with 3 to the power negative 1, which means x is between 1 fourth and 1 half. And at the same time, it needs to be between 1 ninth and 1 third. Okay, what do you think about this? Do you think 1 third is between 1 half and 1 fourth? Yes, but 1 third is not included. 1 ninth is definitely way smaller than 1 fourth. So... What's going to happen? Okay, let's draw a number line and see what happens. One ninth is the smallest number, and then I have the one fourth, and then I have the one third, and then the one half. Okay, so the intersection of these two inequalities is going to be what? So I have one of them is going to look like this, right? And the other one is going to be this one and this one. So it's going to look like this. Obviously, there's an intersection. The intersection is between one fourth and one third, and one fourth is 
included. Awesome. So then our solution is going to be between one third, I mean one fourth and one third. But one third is not included because it's not included in one of the inequalities. It needs to be both. Okay. And as you know, we can write this in the interval notation again with one fourth and one third like this. Awesome. So we got so far how many pieces? One, two, three, and four pieces. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at k equals negative 3. What happens at k equals negative 3? That's going to be interesting. Okay. So now we're getting 2 to the power negative 3 with 2 to the power negative 2. And 3 to the power negative 3 with 3 to the power negative 2. And that's going to turn into what? 1 eighth and 1 fourth. And 1 over 27 with 1 over 9. Awesome. Okay, what happens here? Again, we can do our number line to see what happens, or maybe you already figured it out. Smallest number is 1 over 27, and then 1 over 9, and then 1 over 8, and then 1 over 4. Okay, awesome. The first inequality tells us you're going to be between these two numbers. The second inequality says you've got to be between these two numbers, and obviously 1 ninth is less than 1 eighth. They don't overlap. There's no intersection. There's no solution from here. So the solution set is empty set. So far, we have the following pieces then, right? We have one, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and write them down. We have one, two, three, four. And we should have a total of four pieces, right? One half, one, two, three, four, one half, one, and this one, okay? One half, one and one fourth, one third, they're all semi-closed or half closed, whatever you want to call that. And I'm just going to union them and that's going to be our solution set. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.